Good evening, everybody. For those of you who have not met me, my name is Helen Rocher Brennan. I am from Tubbercurry in County Sligo in the northwest of Ireland. I was diagnosed eight and a half years ago with early onset Alzheimer's disease. My diagnosis took me into a very dark depression because there were no services for me. I was always a warrior, but after my diagnosis, I became a worrier. There was no cure for my illness, but with courage, bravery, and strength, I sought help. Most importantly, it took a major change in attitude. I thought my life was over, but th with support, I found a new way to live. This is for people in the audience who are not part of the European Working Group, who can find that courage too. Seek out support and find what makes you hopeful. I have now returned to being a warrior with the support of the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland and Alzheimer's Europe, and my volunteer, Carmel Gagan, who has helped me travel this last number of years and who's ill and cannot be with me. And I no longer worry. I'm honored to speak representing the European Working Group of People with Dementia and the voice of the person living with dementia throughout Europe and beyond. Thank you to our Dutch colleagues for hosting this conference. And thank you to Alzheimer's Europe for supporting us throughout the year, and to the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland for supporting me for my preparation here today and for my ag advocacy work. And I also want to thank Global Brain Health Institute, the University of California and Trinity College for taking my message global this evening. The European Working Group was founded by Alzheimer's Europe in 2012. Members are nominated by their national association and as the group's chair, I sit on the board of Alzheimer's Europe. We aim to increase awareness of dementia, challenge stigma, take part in research, and speak about what it is like to live with the condition. I believe we have made a major change in how dementia is viewed in Europe and throughout the world. And as we begin this conference, I'm heartened to see people living with dementia as active participants in the event, and indeed, many in the room this evening. I'm proud of the work of my colleagues in the European Working Group, in particular the robust engagement in research. This year we have continued our work with several EU projects, Paradigm and Patient Engagement in Medicines Development, PACE and Palliative Care, SPAN and Empowerment, Induct and Distinct with PhD students on Technology and Dementia. We are also involved in two major new projects, which are very relevant to people with dementia, and where the group is highly involved, RADAR, about technology to access functioning in people with Alzheimer's, and Alzheimer's disease detect and prevent, where we provide feedback about issues linked to the use of risk reduction programs. I'm honored to have a number of internal groups embrace me as an expert by experience. I'm delighted to work, as I said, with Global Brain Health Institute and ensure the voice of people with dementia is influencing the research work. But as I was preparing for today, I thought about why we come to conferences. And I know most of you in this room, it is an opportunity to share your work, speak about innovation and new initiatives, and interact with other researchers around the world. And that is important. But if I may, now that I'm an official older person, I'm veteran conference attendee, I would like to give you some advice. And you know the Irish are very good at giving advice. I'm sure you've all saw this recently with Brexit. They were hard at it. Um, firstly, please do not get complacent. Let's not go home thinking the job is done. There are many innovations happening, but there are also people living with dementia, getting poor care. As a dementia researcher or policymaker, you must also be a dementia advocate. I urge you to fight for funding and make those innovations the norm and not the exception. I also ask you to consider the theme of the conference, making valuable connections. Please make those connections so you do not have to reinvent the wheel. Share your work, think about scale and learn from others. We must all work together. Next, I hope all of you will think about how you can involve more stakeholders in your work to hear voices, not just of institutions, organizations, and policymakers, but of real people. Public patient involvement is important. 
those real and authentic voices are critical to your success. I receive many invitations to participate in research, and I'm glad to have my voice heard. But I challenge all of you here to ask yourselves, is Helen the easy option? There are millions of people living with dementia throughout Europe, people living in rural areas with no transport, people living alone with no support to prepare and travel, people who do not use email, are those whose sight is poor and need support with the documents. People who live in a country where they do not speak the language and they have lost their voice. I'm going to say that again. They have lost their voice. You have the power to support them to find it again. You need to reach out to those people and take practical steps to support diverse voices in research. Find the Helen in your own country and don't take the easy option. Public, person public involvement is about many people not, consul not consulting with one person with a dementia to take a box. The day will come when I cannot participate at this level. In fact, the day is coming. Already my son is beginning to worry about what mum is going to do when her, she steps down from her role as chair of the working, European Working Group. So if you are looking at me thinking I would love to ask Helen to do some research work, stop it. Go home and find people living with dementia in your country. I hope when I can no longer travel that there will be researchers and policymakers at home in Ireland who will continue to consult with me and offer appropriate support. I would also like to advise you to look at the whole person and in particular our social health. It is a theme that comes up again and again and when I speak to other people when I speak to other people living with dementia, our social worlds are vital. We want to be viewed as people with hopes and dreams and autonomy. Even as our dementia progresses, we can still make choices and we can maintain hobbies and interests. We want to be connected in our communities. I am more than a set of symptoms. I am a person. No matter what the project or healthcare situation, my personhood must be honoured. We speak about, a lot about dementia-friendly communities, but I want to move to dementia-inclusive communities. I and others living with dementia have a right to be included. Friends come and go, but inclusion is my right. I want to live in an all-inclusive community with no disability left behind. I believe we have a major amount of work to do on education from infant school onwards. We need to educate people we come in contact with and give them the skills and to understand our needs and difficulties we may be experiencing. I want to find solutions to a better quality of life for all and in the loneliness and isolation many people experience. This is the world I want to live in, ladies and gentlemen. I want to participate in and I want to feel part of. Finally, I want to remember the people who are not here, the people living with dementia and their families throughout Europe, the people who are in nursing homes are fighting for home care, who struggle to walk, to communicate, the families who struggle to care. They must be in our thoughts for the next three days. It is not easy, but as Martin Luther King said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward because only in the darkness can you see the stars. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have ran, I have walked, I have cried, I have crawled. I've gone through the darkest place, but now I can see the stars. I can feel that change coming that has been the power of research for me. Research has changed my life, but I want to share that feeling so when you go back to your home country, make connections with the marginalized people with dementia, support them to rise up and find their voice. Despite all the sadness of living with dementia, we also have to have enjoyment and hope. I hope all of you here with dementia find joy and connection in the next few days. And I wish everyone in the room a productive and enjoyable two days. Thank you for listening to me, it means a lot. <laughs>